So welcome everyone to the third session of Stepping Out of Habits. Before we start the session, we'll have a moment's silence, please. So greetings, everyone. Warm welcome. Uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, once again to have uh, Dr. Monica Gelati back in our midst. Uh, it's always good to work with her. Uh, she's an immunologist by training. She realized that scientific research was not her calling while studying at the University of Zurich. Cancer, cancer, yes was her wake up call, and it made her realize that her truth was the way of the heart. She is a relentless explorer and she feels grace to be on this inner journey, hand in hand with her fellow travelers. She works very closely with Nama, which she is now an editor, and is actively engaged in facilitating workshops and online events for us, other organizations, and also on her own behalf. Because there's a basic compatibility, she likes to incorporate Buddhist wisdom into her integral yoga sessions. So the subject of her session today is becoming conscious of our habituated mind. So very much looking forward to this. And over to you, Monica. Thank you so much, James for a very generous introduction and for the opportunity uh, for all of us to be here today. And again, I don't get tired of reiterating beautiful themes to discuss and reflect upon. So thank you for the opportunity and the platform. And um, so thank you all of you to be here today for listening and reflecting together. And um, so we, I thought we'll uh, take it in a kind of a explorative way that we'll brainstorm and reflect and then get to know more maybe about ourselves. So if you have a pen and paper handy, it would be nice. I'm using this whiteboard, trying to use this whiteboard today uh, for the reflections. So the first thing I uh, want all of us to maybe collectively reflect upon is that what is the nature of habits? So if you have a pencil and a paper, you can maybe draw a circle like this or just giving you an idea and write nature of habits. I'm going to try to write it, not bad. <laughs> nature of habits. So what are the properties of habits that you see in your life? We all have habits and what are their general properties. So this is just a demonstration that I am giving. We are all going to do it by ourselves on our paper and using the pencils or pens that we have. And then we are going to draw rays out of it like sun has rays. <laughs> and we are going to write down these words that will come to us about the nature of the habits that maybe one is uh, that they are repetitive, you know, so that would be one word that I would write. Uh, so I'll give us some time, like two, three minutes to uh, make this word web. And then I'll ask each one of you to give me pointers. And that is what I will be writing over here on the whiteboard. So your time starts now. <laughs> so around, say, two to three minutes reflecting on my own habits and what is the common properties like water has a property of being fluid and 
being transparent so what are the properties of habits nature of habits If there is anything you want to ask in between, if uh, something uh, is not clear, please feel free to unmute and ask. Okay, so maybe we have uh, a few pointers. So just give me words that you find uh, when you explore nature of habits. Please keep unmuting and uh, giving me hints and pointers. Yes, Prachi. I noticed something which was paradoxical. I think habits make me heavy as well as they are very easy and flowing sometimes. So heavy. Okay, so we can write flowy. And you say they also make me heavy, right? Okay. Yeah, Monica, it's sticky. Yes, I got the same. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. I'm sure many of us would get them. Sticky. Yeah. Okay. Any any other words? Binding. Binding. Binding, boring, helpless. Okay. Uh, uh, Sardha ji, what did you say? Clinging. Yeah, clinging. Cling. Yeah, so sticky and clingy would go in one. It makes us, you know, slaves. Slaves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So limiting, as Julie yeah. said, limiting. Resistance. Can they also be spiritual Sorry? based and positive? Yes. Like exactly. I said in a such time to meditate, they can be positive or negative. Uh, 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 <clears throat> Yanitri, uh, could you please say it again? Oh, sure. Um, they, can't they be, they can be both positive and negative. So they can be spiritual based habits yeah. to get up and meditate. Yeah. Or for me, more or less a habit of getting up for the class in the morning. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Great. So positive or negative. Both qualities can be there. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Ji is sharing. They are shaping. They shape us. They have the ability to shape or mold us. Beautiful resistance to change yes so habits are like big they're like grooves in which we settle and hence they are limiting and once we settle in then there is resistance to change so this is also a very good point resistance to change and this would also reflect with inertia that we get too settled in with the habits yeah, anything else, anyone, if I'm missing anything, I may not be able to look at all the chats. Restless. Okay, some habits can be restless, make us restless, yes. So that would be in the negative one, that they can be negative also. Some helpful. Habits are memories, exactly. Resentments, anger, these are also habits. So, uh, although this would not go in nature of habits, but yeah, Shilpa, I have noted down your point. This we will come to later, that we have patterns of thinkings, patterns of feelings in which we are habituated. Yeah, point noted. Anything else, anyone? Super, superficial. Superficial, okay. 
so they can be shallow universal universal yes hmm. yes Gra gravitational pull yeah so that would be again uh, going into stickiness of that right because sure. they are yeah sure. pulling yeah beautiful yeah thank you what's coming to me is some are unconscious i don't even know that it's a unconscious and conscious yes yes so they, they have a tendency that they become conscious groove you know we we lose the consciousness that i have this habit so that's right yes unconscious it's, yeah anything else anyone they're comforting comforting <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> at times because uh, at times very very comforting and that is why resistance to change because they are so comforting that i would not like myself to change beautiful that's it okay something like a pillow very comforting <laughs> okay anyone else anything that we are missing static sorry static static yeah so this would go in resistance to change or limited is yeah. that okay yeah names yes <laughs> static yeah stagnant wonderful stagnant Status. Anything else? Anyone? Doesn't need much awareness mm -hmm. once it's into the. Yes, yes, absolutely. So that would go into unconsciousness about the habits. That once they are developed, then you are just, you can be unconscious and they go on in mechanical mode. Yeah, beautiful. Perfect. Anything else? Anyone? Malignant. Malignant uh malignant give me another word james for this cramping i don't know okay cramping would be limited suffocating you mean i think it's something that supports the disease process okay okay malignant Yes. Yeah, so when they are negative, they can support the disease process. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. So let me check my word web also. I don't know if, yeah. Perfect. So thank you everyone for all the inputs. So as we see in ourselves that the nature of habits is uh, sticky, they are sticky once developed they are very sticky. So if I am developing a new habit, for example, maybe getting up in the morning, you know, in the beginning, it causes discomfort because I have to get away from the old habit of getting up late. So in the beginning, there is discomfort. But once the new habit is developed after a bit of practice and they all require practice without practice, uh, nobody shared this point. So I'm going to write this that we need repetition and practice so that uh, they are there. All habits are dependence, depending on how much practice I am doing. So for example, if I am rude in behavior, definitely I'm practicing the rudeness more. Unknowingly, unconsciously, I'm practicing the rudeness more. So it becomes a habit. So now if I have to uh, practice gentle behavior more, I have to become conscious of it and practice gentleness. So Again, once developed, they are very unconscious. We settle down in the grooves, as Rick was saying, very comfort, comfortable grooves that this is how I am, you know, and I don't want to change. I don't need to change. But we don't realize that we are giving it a lot of practice so that it's becoming uh, unconscious. It's like becoming mechanical. Right? So I've just muted all of us so that there is no background. Whenever you want to share, you can unmute. So uh, the other thing that we shared is that they are very sticky in nature, you know, and when they are sticky in nature, then I lose the consciousness of it, that it's, it's like something distance from me, it's a habit, it becomes a part of my individual self. So what also happens as a result of this unconsciousness that I begin to defend my habit. For example, if rude behavior is my habit, 
what i say is i am rude this is my identity i don't realize that i can step away from rudeness and i can change it so when i get too identified with this as uh, J- james was sharing the shallowness it's like on the surface all these habits are on the surface so i can always step back and change that habit the power is in my hands but what usually happens is that we get blinded by the habits so this is a very important point that they are blinding in nature and that is why people who are very critical of us people who keep on finding faults in us they are very helpful if we want to change our bad habits because they won't uh, stop uh, before they make you really perfect you know <laughs> they would keep on pointing out your bad behavior you know maybe this word was rude or maybe you need not say that they would not settle down so criticism is a very helpful pointer if we want to change any habit which we become conscious of and which we now want to step back from so yeah and uh, i think uh, somebody said flowy yeah prachi was sharing flowy because once settled then they have this tendency of going in a mechanical repetitive mode so what makes them powerful is that whether it is a positive habit which is benefiting me or whether it's a negative hap- uh, habit which is really not benefiting me the power is in my hands if i have made it happen by practice then by stepping back from its practice i can also reverse and transmute and transform that habit but the next step that comes here is who wants to since the topic of our discussion is stepping out of our habits right why would i want to step out as rick said that habits are so comforting so why the need to step out at all so that's what uh, is going to be the next discussion here yes uh, prachi you want to share something please go yeah. ahead yeah. there is one point when i think of uh, my habit in a social space uh, i think it's safe to cling to that that should gives me a sense of safety i don't have to be the outlier so it's safe yeah beautiful yeah yes so comforting and safe yes yeah so we're going to just continue since we have talked about nature of habits touched upon it now the question is why to step out why the need to step out and if you have a pencil and a paper please uh, you can start with the process while i scrabble with my writing to step out and also uh, notice that there are some habits uh, which you feel that they are benefiting you would not need uh the need to step out you would not feel the need to step out so just reflect over when do i want to step out of any habit what is that critical juncture at which i decide no now i have to step out what propels the stepping out why is the stepping out required when we are bored of ourselves we want to change we want okay. to okay so when we feel stagnant you mean yes. right stagnancy beautiful yes monica i'm thinking that to to allow the psychic being to come forward and to consciously you know we we surrender to it and it takes us over to get rid of the bad the habits the negative ones uh say it again please sure the psychic being to come forward mhm mhm okay so when you are sharing that when the psychic being comes forward we realize that many habits are not required and they can be let go of yeah yes i i think that the the right giving up the the negative habits allows the psychic being to come forward to the foreground 
Okay. So a kind of a shift to a new consciousness. I can write. Right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Great. So if you have in your life, if you go back in the memory lane and you look at it, when did you feel the need to step out of any habit? It could be an addictive, you know, habits are also very addictive in nature. We, we, we are just obsessed by our thinking patterns, feeling patterns, the way we opinionate about people and ourselves. So very addictive. When have you felt the need that now I need to drop it off, maybe change? Okay, I'm just looking at the chats. Okay, uh, when we step out of habits, we are able to organize. Yes, yes, progress. Julie is saying progress. Yeah, when they become too suffocating and limiting, so that would go in stagnance also. To be more free, yes. When it doesn't make sense for the larger purpose. Yeah. When I am shrinking by clinging to it instead of growing beautiful progress. Yeah, aspiration for something higher and better. So wanting to progress would be one. That if we feel that our negative ones are not benefiting us anymore. When, yeah, that's a beautiful point. When a habit within me brings only pain. Yes, feeling guilty. Okay. So it's not helpful anymore. Yeah. Guilty. Uh, and that would also be uh, when it's giving me pain. It's not helpful. Then I can decide. Work towards harmony. So that would be progress again. When we are compelled to change due to difficult conditions. Yeah. So... Uh, that would be again pain and difficulty. Yes, that compels us forward. Difficult situations. Progress, harmony, beauty, that would all go in this. Harmony, beauty, new consciousness, when it's bringing me pain. Yeah, anything else, anyone? Yeah. I think sometimes I, I do it just to cleanse myself you know or to refine so my to, to purify myself huh okay kind of a detoxification so purification may be why i maybe want to step out okay when i stop blaming others and take responsibility so again that would be new consciousness yes deepthi yeah Fell relax. So Milurani, I'm not sure what you mean by fell relax. Or you want to feel relaxed. That's why you want to step out. I don't know. Please uh, share more if you if you can. Limiting. So that's what one of the points was that it's when it becomes limiting, it limits me, then I can let go of it. And also one point which comes to me is when, when they make us feeling bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, that would go in when not benefiting me. So they are not benefiting me anymore. Not benefiting. Feedback from others. Yeah, this is what I was going to say that when we Yes, unknown and urge and impulse to grow. That would be in progress. And when we get criticism, when other people, as I was sharing in the beginning, they are come, uh, trying us again and again that, you know, this is not right, that is not right. So always mother says that there, usually you can check that if there is any truth in that, whatever other people are criticizing us about. And we will see that there, all, there always is some truth there. If you remove the tone of how they are saying it to you, if you just remove the tone, there is always some truth which we can work upon. You know, so maybe I can get more organized in my mental space or maybe my table is too cluttered and my mother keeps on pointing out. So again, there is a point that my table is cluttered. So if I take it objectively, I can make that progress. Yeah. Perfect. 
Yeah, and many a times, even if not pointed by others, uh, there can be a shift as uh, Yanitri was sharing that there can be a shift in consciousness where I begin to question that why do I need to think like that? You know, why do I need to talk like that? Why do I react like that in every every time I hear something from the other person? So you begin to question basically the way you think, the way you feel, the way you act. And that's a beautiful step in our journey to begin to question the way I feel, the way I think, the way I act, that would take us to what Shilpa was sharing in the beginning, that the way I am thinking right now is a pattern. The way I am feeling right now is a pattern. The way I am acting, reacting is also a pattern. And I would not want to change the pattern unless it gives me trouble. <gasps> you know, just like if, if we have a trouble in our tooth, you know, one of the teeth that we have trouble with, we would not care to go to the doctor unless it pains. So we wait for that pain to happen, that we think that no, maybe the situation is not that serious. And that is a sharing which comes again and again in our uh, you know, circles or people share that if not for our suffering and pain, why do I care to change? And that is why suffering is a beautiful blessing, pain, difficult situations that are now compelling us to get out of our habits are a beautiful, beautiful reminders that time for us to be newborn, newly born. And in one life, there are several opportunities for us to be newly born, if only we become conscious of it. So the way we were just reflecting over it, it's a, it's a kind of an opportunity for each one of us to become conscious of my habit so that there is a distance from me and my habit. You know, and now I am not defending my habit anymore. So if someone comments that I am rude, I don't say to him that, no, I am not rude. No, not at all. I pause for a moment and I look at myself and I say, okay, maybe I was rude. Maybe I can work on myself better. So this is how the moment we become conscious of it, we are ready to take the objective feedback. We have the power in us to reclaim our harmony and change the habit which is not benefiting us. So that's our possibility. We don't have to remain the habit. If it is not benefiting us, we can step back always from any habit, whether it is positive or negative, it doesn't matter. Habit is a habit. And also, you know, one thing that comes to me is that, uh, yeah, maybe we, we should reflect upon it next. Uh, after the nature of the habits and why the need to step out that what are very strong habits in us which keep on pulling us down and limit us so let us take a moment before we open it for a larger reflection just last point that we need to reflect upon is that what are very commonly found habits and don't go into eating with a spoon because that would take us somewhere else Maybe, for example, sticking to my opinions is a habit. It's a very commonly found habit. Sticking to uh, my ideas and judgments that I hold in my mind about myself and others. That is another habit which is very strong and very commonly found. So we'll just make a list, if possible, now of habits that need transformation. If you recognize them in you, very good. If you have seen others, because others are always acting as our mirrors. So if you have seen in others, there are some habits which are very strong and not really very expanding and liberating. Uh, let us make a list of them. Habits that we need to transform. So I'm going to change it. So we are going to make a list of those habits which need transformation and which bind us and tie us with our limitations, commonly found. Start with ourselves and then we, we can also use others as mirrors, people who live with you, they have very good 
uh, helpers in that sense. Okay, impatience is one habit which needs to. Mm -hmm. Okay, sense of superiority and pride. So pride and vanity is something which we can write, which we can notice that it is there and then slowly step back from it, not own it anymore, not listen to the dictates. Impatience. I will be very, very slow with my writing. Uh, let's see. Impatience. Habit of Sorry? Possessiveness. Possessiveness. Yeah. So attachment, stickiness. Huh? Uh, okay. Possessiveness. Attachment. As mother would say, attach only to the divine. Do not attach to anything else. All kind of projections, yes, very important. Projections of our mind are habitual patterns. So becoming conscious of them, the patterns arising from the mind, projections from the mind. Okay, let me just write mind, projection of the mind. Irritation, inertia, inertia is one habit which is very, very common. We all suffer from it <laughs> and that is very glued with whenever we talk about habit, we fall into this inertia of the habit. Sensitive to criticism, yes, yes. So uh, taking critical feedback in a positive way would be something to work upon, which can actually lead to a lot of progress critical feedback. Okay, great. Okay, anything else? Guilt, guilt, yeah, beautiful. Impatience, guilt. Again, you know, we, we see that the center of guilt is uh, me. I am the poor one, I am the victim one, you know, who did this or did that. So again, uh, the large habit is the stickiness, as uh, Sharadaji was saying, the idea of meanness is the biggest bad habit <laughs> that we can get rid of. You know, the I, you know, I did that. So either it goes into pride or vanity, or it can also go into feeling victimized and poor me and unworthy me. No matter whether we are up there or down here, it is just all about me. So I think this is the biggest bad habit that we all need to work upon uh, the stickiness to me me my story my possessions my family my relatives my rewards my ambition my greed my desire so this meanness everywhere this really needs to be tackled yes rick yeah rick please go ahead the tendency to try to persuade others to convince others somewhat with the meanness yeah yeah absolutely so again that would come into uh, wanting to fix or control you know my way is the right way uh, we we all have tasted that <laughs> it's a not a very happy taste yeah thank you for sharing yes. i can also think of uh, putting the burden of my needs on others right yeah so expectation and demands beautiful Yes. So demands and expectations from this world and people around demands. And they are so unending, you know, they are unending like bottomless abyss, these demands. Okay. Fear, control, losing willpower, feeling helpless. Beautiful. Fear is one bad habit. And again, when, whenever we talk of fear, it is very much glued to the meanness because if meanness is not there, if me, the identity, separate sense of identity is not there, then there is no need for the fear to be there.
so it's only when i'm stuck in this limited sense of ego self that i have more fear so the more fear i have the more ego i have you know it's very back to back wait stubbornness stubbornness and again you know you would see that many of these things are very useful for example if i am very stubborn and i have a very high goal good goal to pursue then that very same stubbornness would be very helpful so i am just stubborn that i want want to unite myself with the divine for example it's a very good stubbornness to have and it could be translated slowly the distortion can be translated to bhakti devotion that i am very sticky but i am sticky to the divine <laughs> so we would see that these same words that we are reflecting upon it's just a very small window that we are opening but the same words can be very powerful in an other sense so uh, just opening kind of uh, the platform for reflection further and sharing if you want to that uh, those habits which are helpful i should know and notice and become conscious that it is helping me and continue and nurture it those habits which are not helpful anymore i should abandon them and the good point is that how do i know that they are not helpful that comes through my pain whenever i am in suffering because of a habit then i want to get rid of it for example if i am addicted to oily food or maybe you know maybe cigarettes or whatever addiction that i am carrying you know addicted to my thought patterns addicted to the way i feel again and again the same repetitive mood addicted to my stories in the head so as long as they are benefiting me i won't drop them no one will be able to drop them but when i undergo pain and suffering because of the repetitive you know the default pattern in the head then i think about is it benefiting me haven't i tortured myself enough thinking about the same person or about myself in the same way over centuries whatever you know as far as i can remember so i feel again and again uh, not because i take a course in pain and suffering <laughs> but i feel that pain and suffering are a beautiful beautiful reminders uh, of us to change that hey it is not serving you time to change if only we can read the signal rather than feeling blamed and victimized that you know why did this happen to me why did that relationship broke you know break or why did that disease come to me so if we leave all that aside the negative loops of thinking then we can see that the universe is always working for us as mother in her prayers and meditation would say you know that the divine victory is certain there is no doubt whether i collaborate or not collaborate it doesn't matter i will be led to my goal which is union with the divine consciousness my true consciousness so just stopping the uh, my port right now so that's the power we have that the moment i want to become conscious of my being there is you know there it is right now right now is the right moment and as sri aurobindo says that we always have the free will so the, the divine cannot ever force any surrender on us if i am not ready i am happily saying no the divine is patiently very patiently waiting very compassionate and if not in this lifetime the divine keeps on waiting in another in another in another so in eternity there are several lifetimes and uh, there is no hurry but we since we have this human birth we are in a hurry so it's paradoxically you know both the points are true and mother says that human birth is a very very precious opportunity to do the right job that we are here to do and it's only in human consciousness that i can step back from from the habits which are not nurturing in nature so cultivating positive habits for example if i notice a kind of a misery in uh, like a miser attitude in me if i notice that i am greedy and it is making me suffer so the moment a ripple of greediness comes in me what do i do i notice it i become conscious of it and i instead become generous so the last piece of chocolate that i wanted for myself 
I don't take it and I offer it to anyone who wanted to have it. Look, you have it. So to cultivate the positive virtues, noticing that the negative ones are not really helpful for me and they are not expanding or opening my heart. And I feel that this requires a tremendous courage and also a love for oneself. Because if we have tortured enough our own self, suffocating and limiting ourselves, and once I'm convinced that no, 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 not enough torture, you know, enough of torture for me and now not anymore on this road, then I will be compelled to take care of myself and to expand the doors of my heart, you know, open the door of my heart. So the key is always with us. No one can compel me to anything as Rick was sharing this forcing and trying to persuade others. This never works, you know, haven't we seen in our lives? Are we ever able to change any sibling? Are we able, able to change any parent, you know, any partner? Never. Why? Because it's not out there that we have to change. It's in here. Now, so the mastery that we crave on the external world first begins with mastery within ourselves. So that is where it is, is the right point to start. And it is possible even to exert the influence on others. But that would be very subtle and indirect influence. It will not be a like direct push, like in my arrogance, I want to change people, you know, because my job is done, knowing that my job will ne never be done, knowing that perfection is a road you know, and we never reach the end. I, I speak too much, I know, without taking breaths. <laughs> so yeah, I would pause uh, for reflections. Anyone who has to share anything at this point? The last point you shared, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to your own kids, I think that's the most difficult to kind of let the natural force or the divine force take up. Because I don't know if it's ego or pride or just love that makes it very difficult not to give up on your children and their well-being. No, so uh, that's why, uh, you know, Prachi, I was sharing that the same words that we reflected, uh, reflected upon, they have a very different window in every context. So, for example, definitely we should never give up on our children because just like the mother never gives up on us, you know, no matter how many sins we may have done in this life, mother says, even now you can return, you can make a U-turn back to your true self, just like Anguli Mal, you know. After so many murders, he became a disciple of Buddha. So possible, everything is possible. And just like the divine mother never gives up on us, even the biological mother can't ever give up on her children. And that is the stubbornness which is required. But not to give up in a way that they should follow what I want them to follow. Not to give up in a sense that may they open their hearts and may they expand in courage and strength and you know all the beautiful things. So not giving them, giving up in that sense. Yeah, but not to say that I am the right one and I am the mother, I know the best, you know, because that is just our arrogance. We would never know the larger picture, uh, even for our kids. So one thing which really helps me since I'm also a mother uh, is that whenever I feel concerned or anxious about my own children, then I see that why do I need to worry so much? I would do whatever best I can. And just like I am the mother of the divine mother, uh, sorry, I am the child of the divine mother. Uh, they are also the child of the divine mother. So we are all equal, no matter what the age is. So, and isn't she taking care of all that? So why do I need to you know, have this burden of doership on my shoulders. So that really relieves the anxiety. And then we always do whatever best we can do in any situation, even for our children. Yeah. And again, that best is always relative because that would be always dependent on my understanding at that moment. So it's a, you know, it's a long, long journey. <laughs> it's a very long journey. Those of us who have been on this path for many, many years, they would know that the journey never ends. But because the journey is progressive, it brings us joy. As mother says, progress brings us joy. 
so whenever i become conscious of any ugliness in me i make it turn to beauty and that brings me joy you know? any fear in me i try to confront it i come close to it and transcend it you know? again joy so that's why the need uh, in shurobindo he says uh, aryan spirit is required to walk on this path you know kabir ji says warrior spirit <laughs> and in buddhism they say the bodhisattva spirit that one goes on and on and on uh, since this ego is like a hard thick crust which takes many many blows many life experiences to get it grounded and the point is that the moment it gets grounded don't get too relaxed because it has the tendency to spring back again <laughs> so always keeping on guard always being vigilant that my work is far from being done and always continuing this work of being conscious of ourselves and uh, staying a bit away uh, from pointing fault in others because that's a road which is very slippery it's a very slippery road so as mother says even to people who had found their psychic being were living from their psychic being mother would say that uh, uh, now whatever difficulties you face outwardly they are all reflections of things that you have to change in yourselves so that really keeps me focused you know keeps us focused uh, and grounded yeah yeah anything anyone any reflections questions okay so if there is nothing at the moment i want to just repeat a few last points from my cheat sheet that i wrote down uh, while you were reflecting so uh, a few very very important strong habits that we need to work upon all of us you know including myself is our habit to identify with the ego consciousness our habit to stick to my opinion my ideas me as this separate sense of self our habits of repetitive loops of stories our habits of thinking in the same way always about the same person or about my own self our habits of feeling in the same way again and again so these are very sticky uh, very limiting and suffocating habits which we can work upon for those of us who are interested and they may be you all may be working upon it you know, consciously and consciously so this is something which also in isha upanishad commentary of sri aurobindo you know he says that when he talks about this example of uh, devdat and harishchandra for those of us who have gone through it so he says that i devdat now you are asking me that i should be happy in the success of harishchandra who is the other fellow now how how can i be happy for harishchandra when i myself have not achieved that material success what harishchandra has so i am jealous you know how can i be happy for harishchandra so he says very beautifully again a reversal of habit he says that when i am being happy and rejoicing in the success of harishchandra i am actually putting my true self in front so the same divine in harishchandra is rejoicing in the success which is the same divine in devdat so now i am reversing my habit of acting as ego consciousness and knowing myself as this separate limited devdat and he as separate limited harishchandra no that is not the case i am changing my habit what am i doing i am putting my true self identifying with my true self in front what janitri was saying in the beginning that when we bring the psychic to front so when you notice the ripples of jealousy attachment greed you know wanting ill will for others whenever we notice these movements then the moment we become conscious of it we can put the true self in front that the same divine in the other person is rejoicing in the material success the very same divine which is present present in me so this is how i reverse the habit of identifying with the ego consciousness with now identifying with the nurturing habit of identifying with the divine presence in the other or myself doesn't matter one and the same so if he he got a better job i can now rejoice and why am i rejoicing 
because it's it's the divine you know that's what me you know that is what me is so it's it's we are reversing we are becoming conscious of the egoistic habit and we are able to reverse by rejoicing instead of becoming jealous of others so if somebody got a very good relationship you know that and my relationships failed in my lifetime so instead of becoming jealous i can be very delighted and when i am delighting in his happiness i am identifying with my true self which is the divine consciousness so it's for those of us who would like to read uh, exactly the words of mother uh, shri aurobindo they are in commentary on isha upanishad i think uh, maybe the title is karm yogin or i'm not sure i'll have to find find out but it's there or maybe on incarnate word if you type devadatta and harishchandra you it will pop up so that is why i should rejoice because whenever i rejoice in the happiness of others although i may not have that same material success then i am identifying with my true self instead of identifying with the ego consciousness and when we do that when you know when we are able to do that we very we feel very expanded in our hearts that's a signal that i am on the right path it's not suffocating it's not limiting anymore so this was the habit which came to my mind when i was reflecting over it that the habit of sticking to the ego consciousness is a very strong habit that requires many lifetimes of work and also identification with in the same alignment identification with my anger my desire again meanness you know is coming up my expectation from this person how dare he not fulfill it because you know again habit of taking myself too seriously this also we need to drop it complicates things and entangle things we all have gone through all the entanglements you know <laughs> of of taking things too seriously so that is a, and again one habit which uh, i can work upon slowly and mother says that uh, there is nothing called my desire it's like a world of desire and you are just picking up things from it it's very impersonal so don't say that it's my desire and it should be fulfilled so what if it's not fulfilled you know, keep it aside so what helps us here just last point and after that we can uh, maybe uh, have last comments what helps me here what helps us here is that uh, being mindful and not wanting that they should appear overnight disappear overnight they would not disappear ego is not going to disappear overnight i don't have to get frustrated about it that why is it still hanging around the corner when i see it hanging around the corner i have the choice not to listen to its dictates very simple you know just like i can allow a spider in my room to be i don't have to get afraid of the spider just like i am having the space in the room you are also allowed to be the spider or an ant or you know a lizard commonly found in indian homes <laughs> so yeah it can just be i don't have to listen to its dictates because i have done that enough i have suffered from that enough so that's the choice we make becoming conscious becoming mindful and again and again rooting the mind in the body which is its home whenever mind is rooted rooted in the body with the bodily sensations with the breath it's always home and whenever it's home it's restful whenever there are decisions which are taken from the restful mind they are always our higher possibilities they are not adding on to our karma any decisions coming from a restful mind so i have really said enough as i always do <laughs> so last 5 minutes are there if there are, are any reflections any doubts any anything anyone i do have a doubt uh maybe a question uh so you know uh, talking about uh, identifying with ego consciousness 
be it because of painful experiences or some realizations that led to suffering what i've noticed also is when i probably was able to detach let's say from my education professional success sometimes even relationships but it at times leaves me with lot of loneliness uh, and void and how what do i feel that with i never understand that so uh yeah okay so uh why to fill up that void is the question it's uncomfortable ha huh. so why the need to run away from discomfort you know that is how we hold ourselves that is how we embrace ourselves and become our best friends you know just like a crying child comes to you would you say you know making you sit in my lap is too uncomfortable go away no you would bring the child make him sit her or him sit in your lap for as long as the child wants mm. and then when the child has had enough you would say okay the child runs back away on its own mm. so this is another thing which we need to develop which is the habit a nurturing habit to be with all the situations that are arising mm. if there is discomfort or uncomfortableness of that void that you are feeling again not be sure that the void is there you can never be sure but you feel it okay again we can never trust our feelings but it, you maybe are unsure sure that it is there so stay with it mm. stay with the discomfort just like you would embrace the discomfort uncomforting child you know uncomfortable child why to abandon ourselves and we it it is seen usually that the moment we embrace all the uglinesses because and usually it's a tendency to run away from discomfort yes. so again noticing this tendency when it is arising that see the void feeling is here again and again i want to run away mm -hmm. so notice the tendency and be there just like a loyal friend don't abandon yourself mm -hmm. never abandon yourself most complications arise when we abandon ourselves there is nothing that the human spirit cannot uh, transform into something beautiful uh, if we stay with it connect with it it changes its form just like a princess kisses the frog it turns into a prince you know so the moment i become more and more okay with the uncomfortable feeling being there it changes its form you know it it transmutes and what it transmutes into that is your surprise so we won't reveal it <laughs> because every time it would be something different so staying loyally as your friend always whether people are there not there even when loneliness comes so uh, stay with loneliness have a cup of tea with loneliness really it works don't abandon the loneliness it just wants to be held mm -hmm. yes just like savitri you know in uh, in savitri shorbindu says that when savitri confronts the lord of death it transforms mm. into something else so that's just the just the appearance the ugliness or weakness is just the appearance there is always a positive side to whatever is discomforting and uncomfortable we have to wait enough uh, so and if we are you know sometimes it happens no but i did that exercise but that did not happen no transformation happened so it means that we did not wait long enough it's like we are searching for water we dig up it only one foot you know and we say no water then another place one foot no water so it means just we are not digging deep enough so just be there deep enough and things change things show their true face Thank you. That was a very helpful question and a very helpful response for me. Thank you. Thank you, Prachi. Thank you, Rick. Any last comments, anyone? All right. So happy practice, everyone, on a long, long, long journey. <laughs> 
may we all always uh, realign ourselves back whenever we get strayed and thank you everyone for reflecting together thank you james for the beautiful opportunity you're muted james yeah thank you monica thank you thank you monica thank you rick thank you everyone thank you bye bye thank you uh, james uh, please unmute yourself you're unmuted you're muted still thank you shilpa thank you everyone okay yeah thank you very much monica thank yeah you. wonderful session so we meet tomorrow at dt call 5:15 okay bye uh, thank you thank you monica thank wonderful you. session thank you thank you bye 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 everyone thank you